Wave Healer Nation, Tsunami Healing, what is up? We are back for another episode. I'm very excited to talk about this one. This is not normally something we do, uh, but I'm, I'm excited to get into this. Um, we have a, a political documentary that is hitting the film festival circuit right now as we speak. Uh, it's called Petro. It's the first ever left-wing candidate to be the president of Colombia. I have the directors here with me, Sean and Trevor. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Um, I want to get right down to it. Um, powerful movie. Uh, it follows, again, uh, Gustavo Petro, uh, who becomes the first left-wing president of Colombia. Um, I'm usually, I'm not super in tune uh, to political stuff, especially stuff that goes on um, in other countries. But uh, I am excited about this because, obviously, over the last years, I think everybody's kind of tuned in a little bit more. Um, I didn't know a lot about Petro, but uh, there's a lot of mixed views about him it seems like the guy just wants to bring peace to uh his country and to the world and uh try to make it a better place um and and, and it seems so far that we have succeeded in doing that so guys how did you even um get on this topic of wanting to tell the story to the world yeah trevor do you want to do you want to start sure yeah um just to clarify sean is the director and i'm the producer um but the uh the way we got started is that we've actually collaborated together for since we were in college. Um, and we had the opportunity um, in 2007 to make a short film about Gustavo Petro together uh, when he was a senator. And through that experience, um, we really got this deep dive into everything that was happening in the Colombian conflict. Um, we got to know Petro and learn more about his vision for uh, addressing some of these entrenched issues in Colombia. And as a result, you know, we kind of tracked his progress over the next 15 years and kept looking for different sort of access points to come back and tell a bigger, more multifaceted story about what we had learned was happening in Colombia. Um, we had a couple different um, false starts over the years, but ultimately Sean um, came, I think it was the summer of 2020, um, and he called me and said, you know, Petro is polling really well um, leading into the election, the upcoming election. And, you know, this could be a great opportunity um, or framework to tell a story about some of these issues in Colombia that we've been so interested in over the last um, over the last 15 years. So that's really how it got started. Yeah, uh, really cool. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, I, I feel like we're at a precedent of time. Well, I, th I mean, we're, we've already been there. Uh, a lot of things are changing. Um, and it seems to me as if um, Gustavo is a symbol of hope, um, especially for, I think, my generation and, like, uh, younger people. Um, and uh, uh, it, it seems that um, tides are shifting, right, in, in all industries um, here in America as well uh, with our current politics and our, our president. And you're seeing a lot of things. Um, I feel like... We'll say you see you're seeing a lot of chapters close and a lot of new opportunities um, and doors being opened um, with Gustavo being president and, and his term uh, still going. What does that mean for the country of Colombia and what does that mean um, for other nations as well? Uh, because getting into it, um, I have roommates that are from Venezuela. I live with people that are from Venezuela. They've been here for the past few months. And I, I understand yep. in the documentary, um, a lot of people were upset. They were saying that Gustavo wanted to turn Colombia into Venezuela. And because I'm not extremely tapped in or tuned in, what, what does that mean? Um, and how are things changing? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the big fear or one of the big talking points during the campaign, which I, you know, was sort of a scare tactic that was used by his opposition, is that you know, Petro being a former guerrilla and being left wing um, meant that, you know, he would uh, turn the country into a communist dictatorship. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what's happened in the year and a half since he took uh, the presidency, um, nothing of that kind has happened. Um, you know, he has had uh, sort of an uneven first year and a half as president because he hasn't necessarily been able to achieve all of the reforms that he's wanted to but you know he has been uh very vocal about climate change at the cop 28 summit um he's been traveling around the world meeting with uh other world leaders 
also um, trying to uh, continue the negotiations with the re remaining armed groups in the country to try to bring about peace in Colombia. Mm -hmm. um, he managed to pass a, a pretty ambitious pension reform in Congress, and now most recently, uh, health care reform. Um, and so I think that, you know, a lot of that rhetoric about uh, Petro uh, turning Colombia into Venezuela has kind of died away now and has been replaced with, you know, zeroing in on whether or not he's effective um, as president. And, you know, I think there are a lot of valid critiques to be made of him mm -hmm. um, uh, or of, of his ability to govern. But um, I think that it's important uh, for people to differentiate between, uh, you know, propaganda and and rhetoric and then what is the the reality and and the truth of the matter is and we spoke about this in another interview recently is that the country is incredibly polarized if you look at um you know uh the regions in which a lot of people voted for petro they're pretty specific and uh you know in many cases there there are places that were ravaged by paramilitary violence over the years. Um, and so these are people who were directly affected by the conflict who saw in Petro an opportunity to try to bring an end to that conflict. Um, and he continues to try to do that. So I think depending on who you ask, um, you know, Petro's reputation is sort of um, through the eye of the beholder. And uh, I think as far as Venezuela goes, I mean, Petro's stance towards Venezuela is that he wants more trade, more open borders, and wants to um, kind of bring Latin American countries together and have an axis of progressive leadership in Latin America and not be isolating a country like Venezuela, um, which he considers, uh, you know, an important neighboring trade partner. Um, so uh, I think his, his vision for the future of Colombia is one of unity with the rest of Latin America. Um, and everyone will have their own opinion about how he goes about that, but um, that's sort of outside of our control. I think what we aim to do with the film was really to document this moment of the campaign that where there was a real upswing of, of energy uh, throughout the country, and it was impossible to ignore if you were there. So um, that's what we mainly take a look at in this film. Um, could be interesting to revisit the story sometime in the future. Uh, potentially after his presidency is over and look back at what happened um, during these four years. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, guys. I think, as you mentioned, I think there's definitely a huge, I would say a huge change for the positive, it seems, um, and, and wanting to open up these new opportunities and, and at this forefront of history. Um, with that, it seems as though in the documentary that some people wouldn't give a statement or some people wouldn't give a comment. Um, it seems like it was a lot of people that were potentially against him. Um, how did you guys go about capturing the footage that you did and uh, getting to speak with the people that you did? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, I moved to uh, Bogota for a year and a half for this project. Uh, so when we first spoke in, in, we first spoke in the spring of, I believe it was 2021, with Petro and he mentioned that he had not uh, yet started campaigning, but that we should revisit in September of 21. And so I, we actually flew down to Bogota and met with him at his office in the Senate building because he was a senator before he became president. And when we pitched him the idea, he said, you know, how are you going to make this film if you don't live here? And I said, well, I'll just move here for the film for the duration of the campaign. and. He sort of chuckled and said, okay, you know, if, if that's what you want to do, then, you know, I'll give you um, some access to, to what we're doing. And so that's kind of where we picked up. And then as we began filming with him, it became clear that we needed to include kind of a plurality of other voices. And so we approached other um, progressive leaders in the country. We also uh, made, took pains to try and talk to members of the Colombian um, right wing, uh, who would be considered his opposition now. Um, and one of the people who we really wanted to interview the most is sort of, um, uh, you know, Petro's uh, kind of antagonist over the past two decades, um, Alvaro Uribe, the, the former president. Um, and in the film, we go into some of what happened with Uribe and his national security policy, 
as well as how that led to um, the false positive scandal where, um, you know, homeless teenagers were being passed off as as uh, enemy combatants um, in order to kind of um, uh, increase the number of uh, casualties that the the military and the paramilitaries were inflicting on the FARC. Um, and so we go into this whole backstory about Alvaro Uribe, and I was in touch with his press chief several times and stressed over the course of a year that we wanted to interview him and that we were willing to travel in order to do that because it felt to me like it was really important if we were going to tell this story about Colombian political history and tell Petro's story, but we also needed to have Alvaro Uribe's voice included. Um, but unfortunately, he in the end decided not to participate um, whether he thought that this documentary was going to be some kind of um, biased uh, take on his his presidency or what he may have thought, I, I don't know. But um, we did really make a big effort to try and talk to everybody across um, across the political spectrum. Yeah, and I think uh, just to jump in for a sec, I mean, we we did end up shooting substantially with both of the uh, Petra's top um rivals uh during the election um as well as with uh one of his most vocal critics uh maria fernanda cabal um who says very unflattering things about him in the film Mm -hmm. so i think we we took uh we definitely wanted to create a space for those who had concerns to share them about him um in the film you know so that was always important to us yeah Ah, thank you for sharing, guys. Um, I uh, I believe just in the world, and especially here in America, uh, we're at a point of divide. Like everybody has been so divided. Uh, to your point, polarized opinions about Gustavo. Um, it's interesting to see how that plays out in other countries as well. I, I feel like we're just going through that throughout the world, and I feel like through everything that we've lived through these past few years, I think we got to a point where people want to collaborate more. You know, we we try to look at each other more as being human (laughs) um, and looking past our differences and coming to agreements Um, with telling the story and and celebrating um, Gustavo uh, Petro's uh, presidency in this film and and just the lead up to it. um, How do you feel as though this story, this film will continue to unite people and bring us together? Because with him in office now, uh, just going past, you know, our celebration, um, it seems as though he wants to open up uh, and, 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 again, unite uh, certain countries and uh, industries. And I think we'll hopefully continue to see more of that going forward. Um, but, but yeah, I, I feel – and I, I ask this because, you know, I thought about this recently. Like, you know, we all feel called to do something and we want to help, but we don't know how to help. And as creative people, we've chosen to uh, put this on film so that we can share it with a lot more people, you know, and, and, and talk about this on this podcast to, to get the voice um, and get the message out there. Um, so, yeah, how, how do you guys uh, uh, feel as though we're, we're uniting people through this creative medium, if you will? Well, I think film and documentary film in particular has a real capacity to kind of generate empathy um, for others. And I think in the specific case of this film, you know, you look at, the example that Gustavo Petro and Francia Marquez uh, and their and the progressive movement around them have set, and it's really about the power of collective action. You know, if you look at um, a lot of the communities that we filmed in throughout the making of this film, um, you know, we went to Afro-Colombian communities, we went to indigenous communities, um, we went to uh, campesino communities. And so many of these um, people are are the people in Colombia who have been marginalized and um, whose voices have been historically sidelined in the in the mainstream political debate in Colombia. And so I think the one of the inspiring aspects of working on this film was to kind of witness, um, you know, all of these people coming together together. and and some of them for the first time ever um, in order to try and bring about change. And I think whether that change comes about with this administration or with a subsequent one, um, what what is really inspiring is that people um, are recognizing that the 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 strength of building democracy is that it's you know it happens in numbers and that it happens by 
um, taking collective action. And so um, as much as this film is about Gustavo Petro, it's also about the power of of that and of, of building a grassroots movement um, of people who um, have real needs that haven't been addressed um, in the past and who have been victims of uh, a lot of policies that have been really damaging to the country. Um, so I think, you know, in terms of uh, the capacity of film to generate change um, and the capacity of grassroots political action to generate change, um, to, we're sort of trying to, you know, situate this somewhere in between those two things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, one thought, further thought is just that in terms of specifically how this film might inspire folks um, globally, I think, you know, what we're really trying to do is rather than tell a story about Petro, the man, he's really sort of um, the avatar of decades of struggle of people, social movements coming out of um, one of the most violent countries historically in in the continent, on the continent, um, you know, by some accounts, 200 years of perpetual violence um, that has pitted um right against left and all different sorts of permutations of folks against each other killing each other and to see um the capacity of the colombian electorate to come together through in peaceful means um and simply vote for a change um i think and have a successful transfer of power um i think is a very inspiring um story as we confront our own um, sort of further divided politics, especially moving into the next election. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for, uh, thank you guys for sharing that. And, and, and to go along with that in the last few questions, to get you guys out of here, um, it, it takes a lot of, as you guys know, it takes a lot of uh, time, energy, money, passion to bring a film to life. <laughs> um, so we appreciate and are excited that you guys uh, kept going. And, and now this film is uh, being brought to life. Um, with that, guys, I was just curious, um, do either of you have any family in Colombia or of in Col- any or any of you of any Colombian descent? Because on my side, um, my dad is originally from Guatemala and uh, I have a yeah. cousin um, who her father is Colombian. Um, so she's partially Guatemalan and Colombian. But I never tap too much into it because we aren't particularly like hugely close, but um, I mean, it, it it runs in the family, and same with my grandma. She's originally from Honduras and married my grandpa from Guatemala. Um, so, again, a lot of uh, Middle America, um, uh, Latin countries. Um, are either of you of the descent? No, we're, neither of us are Latino, but our um, our producer, Julian Roberts, who we worked with, or Julian Espinel, uh, who we worked with, is Colombian, and he was the one, he and his family are the ones who originally introduced us to Petro way back in 2007. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, neither of us are Colombian, but we, um, you know, we really stress the importance of working with a, an all Colombian team. So actually, mm-hmm. The only other non-Colombian member of our team was um, uh, in production was our our uh, our sound mixer Juan Manuel Lopez Moreno, um, mm-hmm. who lives in Colombia. But we really worked with uh, an all-Colombian team while we were there, um, and so it was very important to us um, that it wouldn't be just a bunch of foreigners coming to Colombia and trying to tell what, at the end of the day, is a very Colombian story and. A very Latin American story, and actually, I want to kind of um, mention the important work that uh, uh, that we did with the editors Gustavo Vasco and David Rojas, because you know this film is also kind of an excavation of a very complicated political history in Colombia, and um, the writing process was really one of collaboration with with the two of them. Um, Trevor and I are, are co-writers on the film, along with uh, along with those two editors, but they were really the ones to help us kind of uh, zero in on what were the critical, you know, moments of history that needed to be understood in order to kind of grasp what was at stake in this election. Um, you know, for an international audience who's coming into this story uh, without an understanding of Colombian history, how do you distill that into a kind of Cliff's Notes version um, 
of, of, of contemporary political uh, Colombian history so that people can then dive into the importance of, of the 2022 election. So I really, um, you know, I think we both uh, appreciate all of the work that we were able to do with our Colombian team. And certainly the film's script would not be anywhere close to what it became um, without their participation. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think, thank you guys. I appreciate that. And thank you for bringing all that to light and uh, shining light on um, that as well. I, I find it really beautiful and interesting how um, we're all from so many different places, but then, you know, when you start to connect the dots, it's the six degrees of separation and sometimes it feels even closer. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's just so cool how at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're all going through something and we're, we're all humans and we all get to have that experience. But, um, Guys, the film is hitting the circuits right now um, for the film festivals. Um, tell us a little bit about what festivals are on cue and uh, where we can potentially find this film after we've hit those those circuits. Trevor, you want to take it? Yeah. Um, so we had our world premiere in October at the Morelia International Film Festival in Mexico, um, followed up by the Havana Film Festival this past week. Um, and really our... U.S. premiere, or the first time the film will be able to be seen in the United States, uh, will be at the end of January at the Slam Dance Film Festival in Park City, Utah. Um, so as of right now, uh, it's still very much on the festival circuit, which, um, as you know, are, are often our film markets. Uh, so we, we are actively searching, you know, wider distribution in different territories around the world, um, though it looks very promising that we will be putting the film out in Colombia um, in to a wider audience, the general audience um, in the first or second quarter next year. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the trajectory right now. Hopefully it will have a wide release soon. And, and when we have that, we maybe we could come back and, and let you know about it. Yeah, absolutely. There you have it, folks. Make sure you go check it out. And um, Sean, Trevor, it's been uh, a pleasure speaking with you guys this morning. Any last thoughts for the listeners before I let you guys go? Really hard to make a movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for having us. Thank you, guys. Thanks I, so much. I appreciate it. Wave Healer Nation Tsunami Healing, we are out of here. Go check it out until the next episode.